this is your house. This is your day. And these are your people. Lord, remove me. And continue to show yourself. Let your word go forth. attention to the New Testament writer Jude. We will be at verse number 17. For our hearing today, we will have verses 17 through 21. Jude, second to the last book of the Bible, just before Revelation, commencing at verse number 17. And the word reads, but dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you in the last time there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Our subject or theme for this morning is waiting. 
to exhale. Wait to exhale. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Waiting to exhale. Now the video clip that we just finished viewing, it was a very iconic time in history. This particular time, it was something that just kicked off, if you would, women's liberation. It was in 1995 that this particular movie entitled Waiting to Excel was released. This movie was based on a novel that was written by Terry McMillan. Now as the movie depicts the relationships of four various women, that we find that the most memorable scene in this movie had a very different effect to different groups of people. The scene with the clothes burning and the car burning was a favorite and rememberable scene. The same scene that was extremely enjoyable for one group, women, <laughs> was the worst scene for another group, men. Now for women, it woke up a movement, a movement of power and victory. But for men, there was defeat and there was dejection and there was an overwhelming feeling of what's going on. Now women all over the world celebrated. Men went into hiding and out of fear, they started sleeping with one eye open or not even sleeping at all. The crime rate in most cities went down because the brothers went into hiding. Now because of Angela Bassett, Loretta Devine, Layla Rashawn, and Whitney Houston, women instantly felt liberation and power. Sisters all over the world were having waiting to exhale parties. Men felt weakness and vulnerability. Women were not going to be dogged out anymore. Because now there was a movement that started with the female gender based on the power that they seemed to glean from this movie. As they watch Angela Bassett stand in the driveway exacting her revenge and her favor. In real life, men on the other hand saw this as a wake-up call for their own relationships. And now they became afraid of their own spouse or their girlfriend or that side piece. Right. <laughs> the brothers, the men, they had total unrest. Now the same scene, it had polar op opposite views and reaction. There was glory and gratification for some, but there was doom and gloom for the other. Now if we look through this through an eschatological lens, we can see something in the spiritual eye. The same will be when we have the day of judgment. The same will be when we have the rapture. The same will be when the second coming, or the same will be simply the day that you die. We will have one group of people that will be celebrating and rejoicing. Then you will have another group of people that will be wishing that they had done something different in their lives. And they will be living in total unrest. Now as Pastor Green has been uh, preaching and teaching on his series, Life After Death. Today, God has led us to this book of Jude. And the author Jude is a half-brother of Jesus. It is said that James and Jude, the half-brothers of Jesus, did not accept Jesus Christ when he was in his earthly state, when he was performing his earthly ministry. They did not accept him until after he had already been crucified, after he had already died. Now Jude and James are like many of us. You see, Jesus is in your house, but you don't even recognize him. You don't even see him. Jesus, he's right in the middle of your situation, but you miss it totally. However, after going through all that you go through, then you recognize Jesus was right there all along. Here as we look at this particular epistle by Jude, it's in verse number three here, that Jude mentions that his original thought was that he was going to put together this letter. He was going to write this letter. It says he was very eager to talk about salvation. He was very eager to talk about what it means to be saved. That was his original intent. 
However, the Holy Spirit gave him a compelling. The Holy Spirit touched him and said, we got to talk about something else, Jude. He said, we got to talk about this faith. We got to talk about how people are living. We got to talk about what is going on with the people of God. Jude said he had to alter his whole plans and what he was going to write about this letter. Now, the issue is not whether you're saved or not. But the issue is, are you living a saved life? Yeah, you are saved, but are you reaping the benefits of that saved life? Or are you missing out on the blessings? Are you missing out on what that very salvation should be giving to you the benefits of that salvation while you were here on life? The benefits, the blessings that Christ has already prepared for you. Now, there is an afterlife. And we got to make sure that we're ready. We got to make sure that we're prepared. But you also have to be mindful of how you live your life while you are waiting. Now, it's in our theme passage here in verse number 17 that Jew says, remember what you have been taught. He says, remember, remember what you have been taught. Some of you can relate when somebody gave you good godly counsel. They were talking good sense, but you ignored it. Somebody, you got three or four rugrats running around, baby's kids, and you hear mama's voice just playing over and over in your head, just like a CD stuck on repeat. The preacher, the preacher told you to get your life right. The preacher told you to wait before you got married, but you ignored it. Your daddy, your daddy told you to get yourself prepared. He told you to save your money but you ignored it. And now you hear those voices. They're haunting you day in and day out. Because you said, if only I would have listened. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I should have paid attention. Jude, he tells us to remember, remember the things that you have been taught. Now in verses 18 and 19, Jude expounds on the reasons that we're having issues here. The Jude says that there are people, that there are people that they have their own motives. There are people that are not filled with the Holy Spirit. There are people that instead of giving you wise, godly counsel, there are people that have their own motives, they have their own, if you will, they have their own set that they want to see you right in. It's here in verses 18 or 19. That we see there that he says in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. They'll follow their own ungodly desires. You had good counsel, but instead you listen to the wrong people. You see, they said, let's do it now. You won't get pregnant. You listen to the wrong people. They said, just have one told you won't get hooked. You listen to the wrong people. And instead of listening to the one that gave you the good godly counsel, you listen to the nun. Here it is that you listen to the one that hung out on the corner instead of listening to the one that went to the church on the corner. You had good godly counsel. Now you need to understand that there are some people that are for you and there are some people that are totally against you. And because of that, you need to ID your haters. You need to ID your haters. You need to ID all of those people that you know don't want to see you succeed. All of those that don't want to see you succeed in ministry. All of those they want to see you fail. You need to ID your haters. Because you need to know what you're working with and who you're working with. You see, there's people out there, they do not want to see you be successful in life. They don't want to see you when Demetrius says that there's blessings on the way. They don't want to see your blessings come. They don't want to see that new house, that new car. They don't want to see that your ministry is flourishing and growing. They don't want to see that your children are going to college, getting married and doing things the right way. They don't want to see that because they got turmoil in their house. They want your house to be torn totally upside down. They want your house to be the hook. They want your house to be the one that the police are coming to night after night. They want your house to be the one that's destroyed. They want your marriage to fail. They don't want to see you succeed. 
you got some people that will cause division and their main purpose is just to get you off track. Their purpose, their purpose, their mission is to destroy every meaningful relationship that you have. The Bible says here that they're false teachers. It says that they're false teachers. Now in verse number 20, Jude begins to help us here. He begins to tell us what we can do while we are waiting. What can you do while you are waiting for that day? What can you do while you are waiting to excel? One of the things that you have to do here in verse number 20, it says, dear friends, by building yourself, building yourself up in a most holy faith, you've got to keep building. You've got to grow your faith. Now, instead of building religion, you have to build your faith. You've got to build your relationship. You've got to build on the foundation of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You've got to build on him as your foundation. Now, I know it's important to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, but you can't substitute having true faith with just saying the words. You have to know who he is. We have a whole lot of criminals that stand before the judge and they say all the right things about finding God when they were behind bars. And as soon as they get out, they forget how to spell God, let alone knowing who God is. You have to know who he is. You can't just use the words as a tool to impress somebody. You got people using them as a tool just to get released, but they have no knowledge. They have no understanding. But you gotta continue to build your faith. You can't put your faith in things. You can't put your faith in houses, cars, jobs. You can't put your faith in people because none of those things will determine your spiritual wealth. None of the things will make you spiritually rich. Now see, we gotta understand that you gotta build your faith because you need to be sustained during the times that you get weak. You are responsible for building your faith. You are responsible. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That means it comes. That means it's developed. That means that there is a pattern of consistent evolution. Yeah, we do have a measure of faith. But that measure of faith should grow. Yeah, you might have the faith of a mustard seed. But at some time, that seed that's been planted in the foundation of Christ Jesus should begin to grow just from a seed. But should begin to grow, blossom, flower. It needs to be continuing to just be not just planted, but it needs to grow. It ought to be a continuing process. You need to have increasing faith. Now a toddler, a, a baby, they cannot learn to walk unless they have trial and error. And sometimes for us it's just that. Our faith gets built based on some of our trials and some of our errors. Some of the things that we went through, because we went through and we made it, now we got faith. Some of the things that we did that we know we shouldn't have done, because God kept us, he saved us, he could have left us to die, now we got faith. Because we are a living witness, a testimony of just how good God is. Your faith is continuing to grow. See, your faith, it has to be just planted and rooted in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you're going to go through some things. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to be, you're going to fail. But you got to know it's just going to make me better. It's just going to make me wiser. It's just going to make me stronger. My faith is going to continue to grow. A toddler, they grow. They bump their heads, but they get back up. They run to the tables. They get, they get knocks on their heads. They get scratches. They bleed, but they keep on getting up, and they keep on trying again. Yeah, I know life has hit you hard. I know you bumped your head, but you got to say, I'm going to get right back on up. I'm going to try it again. Yeah, I might have stumbled. I might have fell. I might even have to crawl a little way. But I'm going to get back up because I got to walk in my faith. I got to walk according to how the Lord has led me. Yeah, life 
it's rough and the going is tough, but I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'm going to keep on trying. I'm not going to give up, even though sometimes life gets hard, it gets rough, but yeah, I know that I got a God. He's keeping me. He's holding my head. Any time that I need to say, God, I've fallen down, he'll reach down and he'll pick me up. As he picks me up, my faith is just growing, it's growing, it's growing. You've got to build on your faith. You've got to keep praying. Jude says right there, he says, not only build yourself up in the most holy faith, but he says, pray in the Holy Spirit. You got to keep praying. You got to stay connected to your power source. You got to stay connected. You got to stay connected to God. Now, are you complaining to God about your situation instead of praying to God about your situation? Are you too busy complaining to God about your husband instead of praying to God for your husband? Are you too busy complaining about your wife instead of praying for your wife? Let me help you today. Complaining is not praying. Because God hears a lot of complaints. But complaints do not move God. It's a sincere prayer. Knowing that you're connected to the power source. Because you're praying in earnest. Knowing whatever you're going through, that he hears your prayer. And that we serve a God that answers prayer. You cannot complain your way out. You got to have a constant communication. Sometimes we live our lives like a broken cell phone. We stop all communication. And we don't have the money to go and get another cell phone. So we live without. We say, I can't get a hold of you. Somebody, they called you, and there was no answer. And you said, well, my number changed. Well, the reason your number changed is you didn't have the money to pay the bill. Some of us, God says your numbers changed because all you've been doing is complaining. So I had to cut your cell phone off. The communication, it just stopped. Your connection does not come from religion. I told you earlier that it comes from relationship. It does not come from doing something that somebody told you to do. It comes from doing what God told you to do. See, Jude told you there will be false teachers. He said there will be people that will cause division. Somebody in here, somebody told you you had a goal in a back room. And you had to say hallelujah ten times until you spoke in tongues when the devil is a liar. All you got to do is know you got Jesus in your heart. But somebody told you when you joined the church, they read on a little three by five index card. If you just confess with your mouth and just say a sinner's prayer. Well, a sinner's prayer don't mean nothing if you don't understand the sin that you're in. And if you don't understand forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Yeah, somebody, you got dipped in a baptismal pool. Somebody told you if you just get baptized, when you get out of the water, that you will be saved. Well, yeah, we have to get baptized, but baptism in the pool don't save nobody. You just went in a dry devil, but you came out a wet devil. Somebody knows that you need to have a relationship with Christ. You need to keep praying. You need to stay connected. You need to continue to say, Lord, help me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, save me. Y'all better say that. It ain't time for that, child. It ain't time for that, child. And the last thing that Jude tells us here, he says, keep yourself in verse number 21. Keep yourself in God's love as you wait. That's the word for the day. Keep on waiting. Don't move without God. You need to continue to just wait on the Lord. Don't get in front of God. Don't let God get too far ahead of you. Don't let God get too far behind you. When God is pulling it, say, I'm coming with you, Lord. When he's telling you to go right, Lord, I'm going to go right with you. When he's telling you to go left, Lord, I'm
going to go left with you. You have to continue to move however God is moving you. You got to remember that when God says move, you got to move. But too many people, when God says move, you stay still. When God says be still, then you start moving. Sometimes you get to the point where you just think that God's not hearing you. He's not listening to you. You think that he's forgot you. You say that he's not moving fast enough. Now the reason you don't know because he's trying to tell you to keep building, to keep praying. And now you just got to wait. Uh, just wait uh, to that day. Just wait to the appointed hour. Just wait till I call you. Just wait till you hear my voice. Just wait till I give you direction. Just wait till I order your footsteps. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on the Lord. See, you need to quit playing tug of war with the Lord. See, you play in tug of war with the Lord. Now, you know that the Lord is almighty. So he can do one or two things. When you're playing tug of war with the Lord, he can pull you, and all you do is fall flat on your face. Or he can totally let go, and then you fall backwards. Either way, you lose in the tug of war. So you got to quit playing tug of war with the Lord because he is in control. He is the only one who knows what he has in store for you. But you got to say, Lord, I'm just going to keep on waiting. I'm going to keep on waiting. He may not come when you want him, but he's always, always, always right on time. Who wait on the Lord, he shall renew your strength. You shall mount up on wings like eagles. You shall run and not get weary. You shall walk and never faint. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm waiting. I'm waiting in the love of God. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to hold on till he says let go. I want to be kept in his holy presence. I will be led by his spirit. When God says move, I will move. When he says stay still, I'm going to be still. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on the Lord Jesus. Well, who is this Jesus? He is the one that he died for your sins and mine. He is the one whose blood was shed so that all sin will be wiped away. Who is this Jesus? He's the King of Kings, Jesus. He's the Lord of Lords, Jesus. He's the one that every knee must bow, that every tongue must confess. His name is Jesus. He's home to the homeless, Jesus. He's healing to the sick, Jesus. He's bread to the hungry, Jesus. He's water to the thirsty.